Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to Just One New Camera. Quite an improvement, isn't it? But then again, it should be because yesterday I dropped $5,000 on a brand new camera body and a brand new super duper lens. But wait, there's more. I also spent a grand on lights, some of which are here, some of which are due to arrive next week. And once I've sold my old gear, I'm gonna spend another grand on a super duper macro lens so I can get really up close and personal on the outdoor macro shots. I'll make a video about this in a couple of weeks time. I finished my studies, I'm now going full time on YouTube, meaning I can put full time effort into my output. Please bear with me, give me a week or so to get used to all this new gear, but you should notice a distinct improvement in the production quality in the future. Unfortunately, there will be no such improvement in the jokes made by the host in the future. Anyway, I thought I would start today with a nice and simple double unboxing. We're going a little bit upscale today. These two watches cost between 700 and 750 US dollars each, or at least that's what they did in the Aussie equivalent. Tissot Gentleman. Now, I reviewed the Tissot Gentleman a couple of years ago when it was brand new and pretty hot at the time. I thought it was a great all-rounder, not without its occasional weakness, but overall a very strong package. Now, Swatch Group being Swatch Group, all they've done over the last couple of years is add a hundred different color variants, and today I've got the green one to show you. The second watch, which I think goes pretty much head-to-head -head against the Tissot Gentleman, is one of the new Citizen Series 8 models. I've been really keen to see these ones since they were launched last year, a real step up in quality from Citizen. It's going to be very interesting to compare the case finishes across the two watches. Now, I didn't just buy these, but I know a man who did, Mr. P. I felt like a bit of an enabler, to be honest. He phoned me from the shop when he was buying them, asking me if I would be interested in unboxing them. I said, yes, please. He bought them from Vincent at Wamada Jewelers, so he got a deal, I'm sure. I'll leave a link to Vincent's store in the description of the video. If you're from Sydney, you probably know about him already. All right then, let's flip this very expensive camera and peel off some stickers. All right, Citizen Tiso, Citizen Tiso, I think you know what I'm gonna do here. I tend to unbox the one I'm most interested in second, so I'm gonna hang on to the Citizen, especially as I've already kind of done the Tiso. I had a look, it was October 2020 when I reviewed the black one. While I'm getting it out of this rather interesting packaging, I wanna talk about some of the color variants I hinted at in the intro. Back then, times were simpler. There was only black, silver, and blue available. Look at the range now. Admittedly, they have added a quartz, which instantly doubled the number of different options, but there are now no less than 30 TESO gentlemen's for you to choose from. This seems to be an emerging trend as well, them adding a solid 18 karat gold bezel to their models, charging an extra grand or so, and adding a touch of bling. They did that with the PRX as well. 1250 is the Aussie list price for these, 1350 if you want titanium. Mr. P didn't pay anything like that, and I would suggest that you don't pay anything like that either. And there is Mr. P's green dial variant ready to go. Now, if you watched my PRX unboxing last week, you'll be aware of the new packaging featuring this, a pop-up Tissot factory, pretty out there. But let's concentrate on the watch, shall we? Model variant T127.407.11.091.01. All right, let's hit the stickers. And let's give it a bit of a wind, just make sure the movement is okay. No screw down crown on this one, but it does manage 100 meters of water resistance from the Silesium version of the Paramatic 80, and there we go. Yeah, this is a good one. All right, let's get it sized up, get it set, and get it on wrist. There we go, that's it on top of my seven inch wrist. It's a chunky 40, the gentleman. I remember this from my original encounter with it at the back end of 2020. 40 mil in diameter and only 12 mil thick. 48 lug to lug is fine, but it does have male end links. That takes it out to about 53, and it weighs quite a lot. It weighs 153 grams. That is Rolex Submariner weight from, I guess it's a Gada style everyday watch this one, but yeah, definitely chunkier than you might have anticipated if you just saw those dimensions written down on paper. And I should also mention the 21 millimeter lug width. So have a good think if you're in for one of these, whether you want to go for it on a bracelet or on one of those multiple leather straps that now seem to be available direct from Tissot. Really the interest here today is in that dial and it is a very nice dial, isn't it? Lovely shade of green sunburst, but not too much sunburst. 
Now we do have a very mildly domed piece of sapphire crystal on this one with some but not enough anti-reflective undercoating, I don't think. Really with a dial like that, you want an extra couple of layers so that it can be allowed to pop, but there you go. Still a very strong all-rounder. Let me know if you want to see a full review of this one. Because I looked at the black dial relatively recently, I wasn't planning on it, but if there is enough interest, if you want to see this one outside under macro, etc., etc., then I'm sure that can be arranged with Mr. P's permission. On then to the Citizen Series 8. I've had my eye on these since they launched about six months or so ago. Kind of interesting pitch from Citizen. I know they do some more expensive GDM stuff. This one, I figure, kind of goes head to head with the Seiko Presage line of watches. And it is Citizen getting on the kind of bandwagon for, there we are, Wamara Jewelry five year warranty. Citizen getting on that angular sports watch semi integrated bracelet bandwagon. It's a look that has been so popular over the last few years. This is their admittedly belated entry. All right, this is different. See-through box lid. I don't think I've seen one of those before. Anyway, it's kind of short-lived because, ta-da, there is the watch underneath it. Yeah, that looks interesting. Not a huge amount in the way of stickers to peel, but we'll do what we can, starting with the dial protector there, the big one. Yeah, very distinct octagonal shape here and some very interesting case finish. I'm more interested in the caliber that they've used in this one. They refer to it as a 9051, so I assume it is Miyota 9000 series based, but I couldn't find much about it online. This was the only picture that I was able to find of this 9051, and even then it's from an oblique angle and it's kind of shrouded in mist and mystery. This is as close as I could get to the same angle of a Miyota 9015, and you can see there are some similarities, but some differences. Have a look at the fine adjustment levers on the 9015 and then have a look at them on the 9051. Yeah, clearly this one has got the screw adjustment. You'll be able to adjust it more accurately, more readily. The rotors are different, etc., etc. I assume it's a more refined 9000 series than is available in other watches. I would love to see more of this, but I'm not going to take Mr. P's case back off a brand new watch. That would be rude. And there we are. There's a very striking watch, isn't it? You can see the applied logo there glinting away. Mostly high polished case with brushed accents. These screw-on crown guards are brushed on the upper surfaces and the very tips of the lugs are brushed there as well, integrating nicely with a fairly spectacular looking bracelet. H-link, multifaceted, full of high polish edges on the outer links and high polish edges on those center links as well. Rather unusual clasp though, reminds me of the one that I wished wasn't on the Citizen Fugu, but was on the Citizen Fugu. It is properly milled underneath though. Not sure if they have any half links here. So yes, yeah, sizing is gonna be a bit of a lottery with this one. Let's do exactly that then, size it up. All right, I'm back and I told a little bit of a fib. Not half links as such, I would say more two third links. There are two of these links, one either side. So you can either have that full piece with articulation attached to the end link, or you can have that smaller solid piece. I left that one on one side, but I have removed it on the other side for a decent fit. And I got what I think is a pretty decent fit. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference if I haven't mentioned it a hundred times so far already this week. This one again is 40 mil in diameter, only 10 and a half mil thick though. Miyota 9000 series is a notoriously slim movement. 47 lug to lug, so slightly smaller, but it does have that articulated first link of the end link. Sized up for me on the scales, 144 grams. So again, pretty thick and chunky, but this one is more angular. I guess visually you would expect it to be a little bit heavier, a little bit chunkier because of the angled case design. Now, as soon as you put a chunky angular stainless steel sports watch on the market these days, people instantly reference the Patek Philippe Nautilus and the AP Royal Oak. I don't think those references are valid in this case. I think you're far more looking at the Girard Perigot Laurietto, or more specifically, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. I think that is most akin to this Citizen, particularly because of the octagonal case shape. Although unlike all four of those watches, this one doesn't have an integrated bracelet. It's just trying to look like it does. So what do you think of these two then? Interesting that Mr. P came back from the shop with both of them at the same time. He is a bit of a watch addict, so perhaps that's responsible. Similar in terms of the dimensions, these ones, both 40s, both stainless steel sports watches, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire, crystal, and automatic movements, but clearly different intentions. Swiss made, Silesium Paramatic 80, 
Japanese made, but it only has an admittedly slightly tuned and sharpened 9000 series, definitely not as nice as the Powermatic 80 in the Tissot. Case finish though, I have to say, is a notch above on the Citizen. Tissot's all right, but the Citizen is definitely the more interesting, and the bracelet is finished much, much better, I think, than on the Tissot. Which one would you pick? What's your fancy? Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, Tissot, Citizen, or perhaps you would opt for something different altogether. Or maybe like Mr. P, you just dump up the cash and buy both. So there you have it. Did you fancy the green dial Tiso gentlemen? Or are you a little more conservative? If so, check out the review of the black dial version from a couple of years back. Citizen, very nice. Not quite Grand Seiko quality at that price anyway. Why not check out what Grand Seiko quality looks like with the review of this one. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.